Good afternoon, YouTube, and welcome back once again to Fat Cat Collections. Today, folks, going to share with you another acquisition for Fat Cat Collections. Uh, this is another watch. And I know, right? It, it, the party never ends. Um, so let me just first off, I apologize in advance. I got a little fan going here. So if you hear a little bit of background noise, uh, I'm just sweating. I had too much coffee already. So uh, that's what that noise is. So anyway, uh, Ballast is a company that um, I've heard of many years ago. Uh, it's a company that I reviewed uh, one of their Trafalgars many, many years ago. Just an incredible brand. Uh, another what I would consider a micro brand company. I know you're going to get a lot of uh, folks who are going to be like, oh no, that's not micro brand. Remember, my definition of micro brand watches, there's really anything that's not mainstream. Something you're not going to walk into a big box store and find. Now, I'm, I'm not you know, going to say there's not some little mom and pop shop that you may find this. Not really sure. Some folks may say if, they, if they're on Amazon, then they're not micro brands. To me, a micro brand is anything not mainstream. So again, in order for you to get a ballast watch, you're not going to walk into your Walmart, your JC Penney's, your your Bon Marche, whatever you know, Floyd and Taylor's, whatever stores around uh, areas you live. You're going to have to either get it online or directly from the manufacturer. So to me, this is a micro brand watch. Um, now, ballast, I love you, ballast. I do. I love Dartmouth. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, Dartmouth Brands is the basically like the parent company. And I always kind of screw that up, but it's like the parent company uh, who's in control of several different brands, uh, such as like, I believe Spinnaker's in there, uh, my most recent RGMT. Stay tuned for that this weekend. Uh, probably by the time you're watching this, you've already watched it. Uh, and then, of course, uh, Nubeo. Uh, this brand, this company, has really come out with a lot of really unique and interesting designs. Now, when I compare this to other watches, you know, of course, there's always going to be something for everyone. These are not your huge, over-the-top Aragons and Victas, although they're not small watches by any means. And the one we're going to talk about today is the Holland. So ballast watches, from what I can tell, most of the ones that I've seen and reviewed, they're very military-inspired, right? Uh, now, I don't mean that they're all made of camouflage. They do have a couple versions, right, that are kind of like a digital camo. Uh, but the one, again, we're talking about today is the Holland. And this is themed after the USS Holland um, uh, submarine, right? And so I think it's really smart to do themed watches like this because there are so many military buffs who really enjoy history and really enjoy, you know, the, the different... Um, you know, types of weapons that the U.S. military has had and other countries as well. Um, it's very interesting. I think it's it's really a great niche uh, to, you know, attract uh, people into collecting watches. It was, you know, what's cool about watch collecting is that somebody may not have even really thought about wearing a watch, and let's say they're just a huge military buff, really interested in, you know, seagoing vessels, and they say, oh, man, you know, that watch is really cool. Maybe they're Googling something about the USS Holland. And maybe they know a lot about it. You know, I'm not really a military buff. You know, I don't really have a, a very extensive uh, knowledge of history, but my dad is. And so it's really interesting uh, that they make stuff like this because people who, you know, again, aren't really into watches may be drawn to becoming a watch collector because of watches like this. So I love it. It's so much... I think it's so much more fun than just making a watch that looks cool, is functional, and it works, right? It's got a story behind it. So let's check out this watch. So first off, the presentation. You guys know, uh, anytime, I repeat myself in a lot of videos, but anytime I do an unboxing, it's not really about the packaging. Because you guys know I keep everything under lock and key, right? So the boxes, for the most part, get thrown away. With Ballast, I'm not going to do that because these are just so beautiful, right? So this is part of the box collection. I, <laughs> that collection is getting larger, but just a great presentation. So when you're giving somebody a gift, or let's say you're gifting this watch, this is fantastic because if somebody gets this, they really feel like they're going through, uh, you know, like a process. They feel like they're 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 on a little a little mission, right, so to speak, uh, to get to the meat and potatoes, the watch, right? So really nice hardwood box. I'm not sure what kind of wood this is, uh, but it's done in kind of like a mahogany finish. And you have the chrome ballast logo uh, right across the front of the box. Simple, clean, you know, nothing nothing really over the top, just clean and basic. Uh, very cool. I really enjoyed unboxing these because I had no expectations on what, and did I say I love ballast watches? I, I mean, this is really generous. I mean, this is why I love doing this YouTube stuff because I get to discover so many new new brands and cool products that I just normally wouldn't have bought, right? Uh, because you know, well, you know, we're not, you know, unless you're rich, you can't buy everything. So this is fantastic. So obviously, you can see my excitement when it comes to reviewing watches. <laughs> so all right, so uh, it's very. This was a lot of fun opening up because I had no expectations. When you open this box up, of course, uh, beautiful presentation. You have this nice kind of velvety kind of 
microfiber-ish uh, material with the ballast logo in chrome. And you get some literature here, which I'm dropping all over the floor. You get the warranty card. We're not going to waste too much time on this. Uh, you get a pillow, of course, where the watch sits. Uh, these are limited edition pieces, and I believe 90%, if not all of the watches by Ballast are limited edition time pieces, which is pretty cool. What I've noticed from, you know, researching watches and looking at their brand over the years, they tend to sell out, you know. So uh, it's a very popular company, and they make a high-quality watch. Uh, limited edition right here on this kind of branding plate or plate right here. Uh, a little bit of a write-up, and I'm not going to read you all this. What I encourage you to do is click the link in the description and read about it on the actual website from Ballast, and then I'll also put a link to Amazon where you can pick this up a little bit cheaper than off the website. You know, I always recommend people buying through Amazon, not only because I'm an Amazon affiliate, but, you know, I want you guys to get the best value. And, of course, if you get something and you don't like it, I want you to be able to return it. And Amazon's got a great return uh, policy, but I don't anticipate you're going to be returning this watch. So I'm not going to read all about the USS Holland. I encourage you to click the link and read about it because I'll just butcher the description. Get a little card there talking about the, uh, the Holland, of course, talking about uh, the of your instruction manual right here. Uh, that's really about it, uh, with the exception of kind of this cool USS Holland collectible postcard. So I like that these are very collectible watches, and I think that if you are a guy who really enjoys, uh, you know, the process of collecting and not just wearing these things for fun or as an accessory piece like I do, uh, this is pretty cool, especially, again, if you're a military buff. Uh, now, some of the other watches I'm going to review by them, I think were generous enough to send me four uh, for my collection, so it's fantastic. Uh, more to come. This is going to be a long-term agreement collaboration with them, and, um, and I'm very fortunate. So, uh, I, they sent me four different models, and I picked out the colors that I, I think spoke to me the most. So let me just pop this off the wrist here. I just sized this today, and I, uh, I've been <laughs> it's a bit on the wrist. So this is... Uh, it's tough to choose a favorite. I'm not going to share all the watches with you. You're going to have to check out each video. They're released weekly. Uh, let's check this one out. So, again, this is the Holland. Just, I mean, if I didn't tell you right off the bat that this was military-inspired, it just has a very dive-like watch look, right? Um, when I first see this watch without knowing any kind of branding, I think of brands like U-Boat. I think of brands like AVI-8, which is another one of their brands. Um, I think of... Um, you know, Taumeister and uh, that Russian diver style, that German diver style watch. Uh, iconic to, to uh, you know, the, the German style dive watches, um, these vintage style pieces, the Cantina style crown protector, uh, which basically you just unscrew this and you have your crown right underneath there. Uh, you have, you know, your seals, of course, keeping the water out of there. And you have this kind of hinge on here, which keeps uh, you from losing this, you know, like I probably would. Uh, very cool, very, very common on Russian style divers and again, German style divers. Um, I chose this particular color because I didn't have anything in my collection that was this color. And so, um, to be honest with you, when you look at the color on the website, this is they call this red. Uh, to me, this is almost more of like a sort of like a copperish kind of red, right? With a little bit of purple, best way to describe it. Um, I like the fact it's not just bright red. It's a very uh, deep, I'm trying to think of like a box of crayons. There's a few colors like this kind of um, I, it reminds me of as a kid. I think, I think copper was one of them, you know? And I know it doesn't, or, copper has more of an orangey kind of color. This has got more of a bronzy-ish, copperish color. It's the best way to describe it. I hope you guys can really see it by the video. Um, it, it does have kind of like an aluminum-like metallic hue to it. Um, you know, I, I believe this face, by looking at it, I'm going to take a guess here and say it is some sort of aluminum. Um, it's stunning, right? It's very cool looking. It's very unique, and I love the way they've done the case on this. Again, very, very Russian diver-ish uh, without being over the top. A lot of times with the Russian divers, they get really big. Not saying this is a small watch by any means. Uh, for most folks, some folks, you know, this is going to be too large. Uh, but to give you guys just the measurement on here, it's 47 millimeters. So um, that measurement, and I do believe that's just at the at the case. Let me just double check that. Yeah, so if you want to actually take this watch out to the Cantina Crown Protector, you're right about 54 millimeter. Uh, you know, you guys know I'm never one to complain about the size of a watch. Uh, no, I don't whine about things like that. I, I put any watch on, no matter how big or small, and it's comfortable, right? Uh, not an issue. Um, it's really cool. You have a domed crystal. Again, that's uh, you do have that Cantina-style crown protector. Uh, and the crown on this here... 
of course, is very small, uh, you know, but once you said this is pretty standard across the board for any kind of crown uh, that's underneath a cantina style crown protector. Uh, you pop it out, of course, adjust your date and adjust your, t adjust your time. It is a three hand automatic movement. I like the fact that they, um, on this watch, they did just a standard um, stainless steel case back. This is 316 all stainless steel, so you're getting that quality. Finishing on it looks great. I mean, and you guys know I never really nitpick things. Um, there is basically, for me, when I, when I do a watch review, it's either is it good or is it not, you know? And so this is good. And for me, good is great, good is the best. I mean, it, there's really no difference to me. I don't put these on their macro lens to really nitpick them, right? They just look fantastic. Um, and on the back of the watch here, uh, you do have um, limited edition ballast and USS Holland. So it is sort of a collectible case back. Um, it is a screw down case back as well. As far as water resistance, you're getting tw 20 ATMs, you have a two year manufacturer warranty, and the watch weighs 250 grams. That might be important to some of you. To me, I'm so desensitized wearing big heavy watches that it's just super comfortable. I don't notice, uh, like I said, I don't really notice anything. The only time I can say that watch might become a little uncomfortable is some of the Invictus, um, if they do have kind of the sharp edged case back, or um, sometimes the exhibition window, the glass can get a little bit sticky. And if you're wearing a watch that's two pounds, uh, that can sometimes irritate you at the end of the day, but not by, not like whining or crying about it, not by any means where I'm like, oh, I gotta take it off. You know, it doesn't, it's not me. Some folks, everybody's different to each their own, but uh, just a super comfortable watch, nice rounded case back. I call these cases almost like a donut style case. They're roundish, like a tire or a donut. Uh, very comfortable, no sharp edges to dig into your wrist or anything like that. That does concern you, except for on the lug. Uh, but that's not going to bother you at all. Uh, this does have a dual push button fold over deploying clasp with lock. Very nice. Three micro adjustments. Uh, it's just a great piece. Uh, of the, th I'm going to pick one. I love them all, but of the ones that sent me, this one is my favorite. I really, really like the look on this. It's very, when I first look at this, I just, I automatically think submarine. It was really interesting. I didn't really read much about the watch or the literature uh, prior to getting these. And when I got it, took it out of the box, I was like, ah, oh, man, that's very submarine. And sure enough, uh, the USS Holland was a submarine. So I love the fact that they really pulled design aspects that you might see in a submarine and applied it to the watch. And some of the things I mean by that are, you know, around the bezel here, you have a couple of these like almost faux uh, rivets you might find on a submarine or an old sh a battleship or something like that. Um, I, I, I believe, you know, I, I'm pretty sure you saw those. Again, I'm not, you know, I just picture old submarines. I see like the rivets and the way they designed them, the way they, they put them together. Again, again, not an expert by any means or even a novice, but uh, that's just what I get when I look at it. I get that, I get a very submarine-ish look. And that makes sense because as soon as I looked at it, I was like, oh, well, there we go. U.S. Navy's first modern commission submarine. Um, and again, I don't want to read all this, but let's get to the important stuff. Stainless steel, 316, 47, case, uh, 47 millimeter case diameter, and of course, 15 millimeters in thickness. Not too big, not too small, nice wrist presence. Um, they mentioned stainless steel again, but I'm not sure why they do that. 24 millimeter stainless steel solid. They really mentioned the solid stainless steel. <laughs> um, I mentioned the buckle and the clasp ready. 24 millimeters in uh, band widthness or bracelet, bracelet width, bracelet width. Um, and that's really the only about the only information they have. Oh, most important thing for you guys when it comes to those check boxes. You know what's my check boxes? You know what kind of movement does it have? What kind of even crystal doesn't bother me. They don't mention the crystal on this, which is kind of surprising. Uh, and I've told them they just need to update their website a little bit because they're again these check boxes that I refer to. Um, you know, they are important to a lot of people. To me, not really. My, my main thing is the movement, and I mean, even that's kind of, eh, you know, but really stainless steel. That's my, my biggest thing. Stainless steel, what does it feel like? Really objective things, and I guess sometimes subjective because you feeling is subjective. When I feel this, I feel a quality watch, and if you're used to Invictus, or, you, or, if, you, or if you bought one of the new Bayos through my video, or whatever the watch may be, whatever watch I reviewed, you can easily compare this to watches that are in the $2,000 price range, and higher. You know, when we look at watches that I personally own, Aqua Dive watches, watches I've handled, Rolex, Omegas, those kinds of watches, to me, the only differences you get when you spend thousands and thousands of dollars on watches is really attention to detail and finishing. You know, that's really about it. I just had a guy comment today. He's like, oh, yep, I had to send my Omega in, have a problem with it. It's going to cost me 700 bucks. So remember, guys, just spending a lot doesn't mean you, you're, you're home free with not having any kind of issues. Um, I like value. You guys know that. So, 
Let's get a couple more close-ups here. Uh, you know, well, when I look at finishing, you know, when I look at like the way they finish things, I never look at a watch bracelet and say, "Oh, you know, this is nice and another." This is how they finished it. You know what? Uh, you know, to me, I see brush marks. That's why it's called brush stainless steel. You know, you're gonna have that. Sometimes I'll have like a matte finish or a sandblast finish. Just depends. This one here is totally brushed. Um, there really isn't any anything mirror polish. Just all nice and brushed. Uh, very cool, and I love that face. The other thing that really uh, attracts me to this watch is the hands. Uh, very unique. They have like a really large, um, what I'm going to call bubble on the minute hand, um, or on, excuse me, on the hour, is that the hour hand? Yeah, on the hour hand. And of course, the second hand is very unique on this. They don't just have like one hand. The second hand extends all the way to the back, of the other side of the case. So it runs across the entire uh, watch. And the reason I think they might, they Again, speculating. The reason I think they did that is probably on what this submarine, there's probably a gauge of some sort that looks like that, that has some sort of purpose, and they duplicated that. So I love that, you know. And I will, after owning these, and, you know, sometimes it takes me a little time to really get to know the watches. I always come back, re review, let you guys know if I have any problems. Um, you know, that's just kind of standard. But I, I really, I really like this. And again, I, I love the color on this. It's just a very, like, reddish, maroonish, brown, coppery kind of color. It's very unique. It's nothing like anything I have in my collection. And I love it. So, without further ado, let's uh, let's throw on the wrist here. Um, before we do that, though, um, if you want to buy this directly on their website, you're looking at 600 bucks. I'm not sure if that includes shipping. If you do go to Amazon, you're at 390 with free returns. Um, I don't know if that includes shipping as well, but I yep, free delivery. So, um, eh, crit a little criticism here. I don't like when websites list a different price than you can get it for on Amazon. So I think you know. A lot of times when I do reviews like this, um, or not a lot of times, all, every time I do reviews like this, I always let the manufacturer know if I've discovered anything that I don't like. And I don't mean like, oh, this, I would change this a little bit. I mean like things that are major issues. Is there a defect, you know? Um, is there, you know, a, is it in pieces already? You know, is it not working? Uh, you know, is something gritty and not, you know, I don't have any issues with this watch at all. It's beautiful. Um, but the issue I have is, you know, they, they need a little more information on their website. I'm glad they listed the movement is a Japanese Miyota 8215. So for those of you who really look for those check boxes, some folks are like, you got to have the NH35, got to have ETA. You know, it's very well respected. Uh, there is no difference, you know, the quality of these things are, it's fantastic. Remember, these are not NASA space shuttles. These are, these are not submarines. These are, um, you know, mass produced watches, even though they're limited edition, like any, like any other brand out there, even Rolex, whatever it may be, these watches are not, this is not rocket science. So it doesn't take a lot of effort to make a high quality watch that's affordable. And the price point on this for $390 directly off Amazon is a great value. It really is. Uh, for what you're getting, it's fantastic. Uh, you know, again, remember value is subjective and personal. What one person values, another person may not. A lot of people value the higher end luxury brands or higher end luxury brands, right? I, I don't, you know, but other people, that doesn't mean somebody shouldn't buy them. That doesn't mean that you, know, you should listen just to me. Everybody's going to find different value and different price points. Some people, it's not about price. Some things about certain those check boxes. With this, you're getting a lot, I think, for your money. I think uh, the story, the design, the company, um, you know, I remember buying a watch is a very, it's a personal choice. And there's lots of things that go into uh, the reasons on why somebody makes a choice. And what's most important is when you see a watch is how does it make you feel? How does it speak to you? You know, does it make you want to wear it and, and, and read about it and learn about it? That's important to me. So, uh, and that's you know, again, with watches, they're all uh, they're all accessories for me, and I really enjoy the process of getting something new, sharing it with you guys, and then being you know, people ask me about it, like, oh, cool watch, what is that? And I you know, I share the brand or I talk about it through the chat networks, whatever. Uh, it, it's just awesome. It's just a really fun hobby to have, and I hope that you guys, uh, I know that you guys from watching my videos really have spent a lot of money buying watches. So, but they're fun. And you can see, uh, again, I have a 7 inch wrist. I weigh about 185 pounds. And this is what a watch looks like on a guy my size, my height, and my weight in a 40 size millimeter fitment. Uh, not too big, not too small. Um, you know, generally I'll wear any size watch, but 47 is kind of where I like to stay as far as like the smaller size of watches. Uh, but again, doesn't mean I don't wear the 41s. I, I, you know, but I think this is really a great in between size if you're not looking for something too big but you don't want something that's you know really you know like your pro diver style uh even though the grand divers are like 47 or you know a lot of watches are 47 
again, guys, you know, you know I'm not, I don't mean to overgeneralize, but um, I think 47 is a great size for somebody who doesn't want anything too big without being kind of not noticeable, right? And this is definitely a watch that will get noticed, definitely has a beautiful wrist presence, and I love... Um, it's cool how when I, I share this with you guys, I see it on the camera here, and you get a different perspective. I love how the lugs look on this. It's very, it really reminds me, and again, this is not, uh, doesn't look anything like that, but it just reminds me of like one of my coalition forces I had back in the day. It just has that very, very aggressive, chiseled, uh, military-inspired style, you know? Very cool. Very cool, guys. Check it out. Links are in the description. I'll link you to uh, Ballast. I'll also link you to Amazon Direct where you can pick this up. Uh, let me know if you do pick it up. I always love hearing about it. I love when you guys go to the uh, Invicta Addiction or Fat Cat Collections Facebook group and page. You know, drop me a comment. Drop those wrist shots. I love knowing that I've um, inspired somebody to add one of these watches to their, co their collection. They're a lot of fun. And uh, stay tuned for more. So two more, three more watches I got from them. Uh, I'm not going to show you, but I... Uh, I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna show you. <laughs> but uh, stay tuned for those. Uh, I'm not sure. I usually try to release every Saturday. I was releasing on Sundays. I've went to Saturdays. Um, you may see them pop up on Wednesdays. We'll see. I try. It depends on what. Sometimes a company likes to get the the reviews out quicker. Uh, this is gonna be a company that you're gonna be seeing more and more watches from. So uh, stay tuned for more. Ballast. Thank you for your generosity. It is appreciated. Looking forward to more collaborations. Uh, again, guys, if I can help you in any way, let me know. Have a wonderful day. Subscribe to the channel and take care.